Hey YouTube, welcome back to another JKR Pro Tips. And we have a brand new topic today, and this is all about snake shedding, why they shed, and how you as a keeper can help. So a snake shed is when it molts or loses the top layer of skin, it has a fresh new layer of skin underneath it. They can shed because of the wounds to heal, they can shed just to get themselves clean, and they can shed because they grow. So there's all different reasons, and every snake is gonna shed at different rates throughout its life. So I'm not a snake expert or herpetologist, but we have experienced snake shedding literally hundreds of thousands of times over the course of all of my years doing this, and we have seen so many different sheds, and there's actually a very clear process that a snake goes through in order to shed, and you can observe it and know that they're going through this process and know when you can help them. So the first step is actually the snake releases a hormone that triggers the entire process of shedding, and the first thing that you'll be able to observe from that is that they will start to look a little bit opaque looking, a little bit um, discolored, a little bit of pink in the skin. If they have white areas like our pides or leucistic snakes, we can see it super clearly. Their whole skin will kind of turn pink. And what that is is the beginning of the process where the snake actually excretes like an oily substance that lifts the old skin and separates it from the new skin that's underneath. So when you see your snake look, in, they call it in being in blue or being in shed, and it looks kind of fuzzy, kind of milky looking, the eyes will look opaque, it looks either blue or gray, that's because that fluid is in between those two layers of skin and it's lifting it away and beginning the process for which you can lose that top layer of skin. It's during this time that you should be adding moisture to the cage. We add a little bit of moisture to our coconut husk. It releases it slowly over time, gives lots of humidity in the tub. This helps them through that process and helps them have a clear shed later. The next thing you're gonna observe is after a few days of being opaque or milky looking and in shed, you'll notice that that shed look goes away and they look almost back to normal. So their body has absorbed that fluid back in and now, although it's not obvious, that layer of skin that it's about to shed is on the body but it's very easy to remove. Sometimes it just takes a couple days after that and during that time you won't even know it's in shed at all if you didn't observe the previous part. So the last step is the actual shedding process. Usually it'll start right at the very face of the snake. It'll rub its, rub its head on the, either the side of your enclosure or on a rough patch or something, kind of just to start it peeling away from the top of the head and from the bottom jaw, and it'll peel it back exactly like a sock. So a couple interesting snake facts about the shed skins is the first thing is they're always inside out. If they shed in a complete tube like they do, the shed is comes off completely inside out and it's always front to back, ideally, because that's the way the, sh the scales are layered on top of each other. It comes off so much easier. Another interesting thing that I see sometimes people will say, well, I found a six foot rat snake, must be in my yard because I found a shed that is six feet. The reality is that the shed actually stretches a lot and you have all that space for the skin between the scales, which is stretched out in a shed. So the shed is actually significantly longer than the snake it comes from. So there's a couple interesting things about that. You can also dry out a shed and you can like, you know, use it. People have used it for all kinds of products. I used to be part of a company who um, make cell phone kind of cases and that sort of thing. Nothing had to be injured or die in order to create a snake skin that came out of it. So it's a really cool renewable source of a type of material from snakes. Another really interesting use of snake shed that just now coming to, into the forefront is there are several different universities and places that are doing interesting work on the DNA that's held in the snake sheds and they can learn a lot about these different mutations that we have in ball pythons, learning how they differ from the standard ball python genome and why all these mutations occur and how we can actually test the snake to find out which mutations it has. It's really interesting for our industry, the ball pythons, as we learn about all these morphs and we're doing it very observationally. It'd be very interesting to get the science aspect involved and it's all gonna come from just a little piece of snake shed. They can actually get the DNA sequence from that. So very, very interesting use and that'd be all about the future of our industry. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is actual issues with the snake shedding. So what happens when your snake does not shed well, when it has problems? So the one thing I've learned over the years is definitely you wanna help them as much as you can prior to the shed because afterwards it becomes much harder and then you're trying to pick little pieces off them and everything. I found that if it's, the snake shed is not actually stuck on the head of the snake, typically, 
it really doesn't seem to bother the snake. They go about their lives completely normal, and and really the main thing is that you address it before the next shed. So with the next shed actually. So what happens is when they're going into the next shed cycle, you go ahead and make sure the humidity is perfect. And what it'll do is it'll shed both sets of skin in the next shed cycle. So, but, but it's very important that you go ahead and address it before the next time because if it starts to reoccur several times, then you might actually have a compounding of skin on there which can cause a real big issue. On the head though, it actually does cause like a lifestyle type issue for the snake where they actually kind of interferes with their lives. Um, if they have an eye cap on that's stuck on, a lot of times that will kind of dry out and become a little glassy looking. That's one way to know there is an eye cap that's left on. And that can be lifted off with a small piece of tape. First, first of all, get some good humidity in there first for a little while, just kind of loosen it up. Um, or sometimes you can take a little wet Q-tip and slowly kind of lift it off. There's a couple different ways to do that. The other thing is sometimes you'll get pieces of shed stuck in the nostrils, which just like if you have a very stuffy nose, it makes it very hard for them to breathe. That can also be gotten off by basically adding humidity, getting it nice and wet for a little while, slowly pulling at it with a Q-tip or a piece of tweezers or something. But for the most part, my philosophy is that if it could happen in the wild and the snakes live and they do fine, they will also find a good way to work through it in captivity too. So the main thing for us as keepers is to set the right environment to make sure they shed well the first time and make sure our, our good husbandry is involved throughout the process. All right, that's it. It's all about snake sheds and why it happens and what to do if something goes wrong. It's a very, very interesting process. What make reptiles reptiles, the fact that they shed their skin like that. It's a very reptilian thing. And uh, it's something that is uh, fun for the keeper because you can kind of track them as they grow that way. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you next time. We bring you more pro tips and we'll see you on the vlog on Friday.